So by now you've probably heard of ChatGPT. My name is Yasser, I'm a pharmacist for the past seven years. I'm going to speak about some of my experiences using ChatGPT and how I use it to make me a better pharmacist. So what do I actually mean by that? It means that how do I use ChatGPT to make my work more efficient and to utilize it in an evidence-based manner. So recently I started a new role and I started as an advanced specialist in interstitial lung disease. This entire area is completely new for me. So during this period, I found it very difficult because I'm adjusting to a new speciality. I used to work as a microbiology specialist, which is termed an antimicrobial pharmacist in the UK. There are a lot of different studies that I have to familiarize myself with, a lot of different medications that I have to familiarize myself with. So how did I utilize ChatGPT to make my life easier, to look at these studies in a more time efficient manner and essentially use it to make me a better pharmacist. So let's go through some questions that I went through when I started my role and you can take a look at just how comprehensive and brilliant the answers are. So I look at patients with interstitial lung disease as I mentioned and they could be commenced on a medication called an antifibrotic. The purpose of an antifibrotic is to prevent further scarring within the lungs and therefore there's a lot of different studies that I have to familiarize myself with in terms of these antifibrotics. One of the medications is called nintendinib. So I asked the question, is nintendinib suitable for progressive refibrosing ILD and what were the study results? At this stage, I already know that it's suitable. I want to know the details about how it was essentially indicated for PF ILD. So immediately it's telling me that it's indicated for idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis, which is correct, and that's a type of interstitial lung disease, and also for progressively fibrosing ILD. Now, one of the key studies evaluating the use of PF ILD is the inbuilt trial. So it's telling me the trial, it's telling me it's randomized, double blinded, placebo controlled, and enrolled 663 patients. And also, it, patients with an intendinib had a 57% reduction in the annual rate of decline in FEC compared to those that were receiving the placebo. Very interesting results. Then I asked the question of what is FEC, forced vital capacity? And that's really important because FEC is one of the factors that we use to determine whether or not um, the medication is effective in these patients. So it tells me it's a measure of lung function, it is the amount of air that a person can exhale forcefully and completely after a deep breath. It's also typically measured using a spirometer, which I'm already familiar with which is a device that measures the volume of air that is exhaled. It's an important measurement in the diagnosis and management of lung diseases like ILD and IPF. So it's already picking up on why I'm asking the question. And this is very interesting. The reason why it's picking up on why I want to know in relation to ILD and IPF is because I've asked the question previously about an antivenin. So it's picked up on that and then starts to tell you that uh, the lung becomes stiff in these conditions and less able to expand and this can lead to a reduction of FVC. So very, very interesting uh, results. Now, this is an interesting question as well. So I spoke about the inbuilt trial. I was actually asked by one of my patients, where was the trial conducted? I didn't know the answer to that. So I asked the question, where was the inbuilt study uh, for Nintendo con conducted? So I can look at that question. This is something that you're not expected to know off the top of your head. So there's a lot of questions that you're gonna look at that you don't know off the top of your head. You should never feel like that doesn't make you a great pharmacist if you can't answer these questions. It's all about analyzing the data with, with regards to looking up these answers. So quickly tells me that it, it's a multinational, randomized, double-blinded, placebo-controlled trial over 194 sites across 15 countries. Answers my question immediately, tells me the countries that are involved in the study. Another question was the fact of how is rheumatoid arthritis related to idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis? So this is an interesting question. So 
I noticed a lot of patients with ILD, so it's actually more likely to be related to patients with it, the overarching thing is patients can have uh, rheumatoid arthritis associated interstitial lung disease. I was noting a lot of patients in the ILD clinic also had rheumatoid arthritis and I wanted to know the relationship between the two. So here it's telling me studies have shown that there's increased prevalence of IPF, so idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis, among patients with rheumatoid arthritis with some estimates suggesting that 10% of patients with rheumatoid arthritis may develop IPF. It's very interesting responses. Then I wanted to know the question of bleeding risk associated with anticoagulants and uh, Nintendo being given together because theoretically there's an increased bleeding risk. So I wanted to know how it explains that. So it talks about the potential interaction between the two medications. It says that nintedinib is a tyrosine kinase inhibitor. It can mildly to moderately increase the bleeding risk. And then of course, DOAX, uh, such as rivaroxaban, nidoxaban, also increase the bleeding risk. So therefore, uh, the two together, in theory, can increase the bleeding risk. However, they were generally, bleeding events were generally mild, moderate in severity. Then I said, what did the study show on anticoagulation and nintendinib compared to nintendinib alone? So I'm asking a very specific question. I want figures now. So it tells you here that the impulses trial, uh, bleeding events were 26.4% in patients receiving nintendinib and anticoagulation together compared to receiving nintendinib alone. That was 17.6%. So that it was generally higher in that cohort, but now I have a percentage to that. So I can understand that there's a mild, moderate increased risk, but I also know from the number of patients that are analyzed, what proportion um, were at higher risk. Another thing I wanted to know was hemoptysis, coughing up blood. Is that a possibility with nintendinib use? Because quite often that can get misdiagnosed, that hemoptysis can get misdiagnosed as an infection in these patients because they obviously have respiratory conditions. And it exactly tells me that it's a known side effect of, from clinical trials. It also says it was reported more frequently with those that are receiving an internib compared to those on a placebo. Um, it also tells me about the fact that the exact mechanism is uh, not well understood. So very interesting responses. So these are some of the things that I literally learned in approximately 10 minutes of asking ChatGPT questions could have taken me a lot longer if I was looking up studies, if I had to summarize studies and sift through all of that information. So very useful information. And it's these are the kind of thing, questions that you can be asking ChatGPT to quickly develop a better understanding of a topic you don't know much about. So like I say in a lot of my videos, it's important to have a good understanding of artificial intelligence and how you can use it in your practice because it can make you work a lot faster within your field. So I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, like the video, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.